Hey everyone, how's it going? Just wait till a few people hop on here. I might be the only person watching this. All right, can you guys drop a one in the comments or something if you guys can hear me just to make sure my mic is set up correctly and then we will jump into this. I see a few people are watching. Hmm. Well, okay, you guys can hear me perfect. So I will go ahead and get started in just a few here. It's just scrolling through Pinterest like I like to do. It's so easy to find niches that aren't full of competition on Amazon just by going back and forth through Pinterest, Merch Informer, Amazon, Merch Research, and then looking at the keywords. So as soon as a few more people hop on here, I'm going to show you what I found and then I want to show you something that we've been working on uh, that's pretty interesting and should help you speed up your upload process a bit. Hey Noah, hello Janet, hello Daniela, hopefully I didn't pronounce your name incorrectly. I'm just going through the Pinterest feed of of what's out there, Not, nothing specific as a few more people have on. Alright, so let's jump into this. I opened up Pinterest this morning and <laughs> look at that dog. The first, the first thing I noticed, this, this page will refresh every time you go to Pinterest. It's going to look different, so if you reload it, everything's a little bit different. But I came across this picture right here. So let me see if I can actually open this. And if the picture's on this page, I'll show you. And it's not, of course. But it says, uh, lose your spare tire with just two exercises, and it's this guy with a beer belly. So. I thought that was interesting. Fitness, huge niche on uh, Merch by Amazon. So let me see if I can just move this over here so that you guys can see the screen. Hello. Hello, Angie. Hello. Good morning. Yes, it is still morning. It's almost 10 a.m. here. So anyways, for you guys showing up, this is the image that I found on Pinterest. Lose your spare tire with just two exercises. So I came over here, we're gonna to go to Merch Research, which I already have open, and I entered losing my spare tire. So what's interesting is I, I saw this image, uh, lose your spare tire with just two exercises, clearly a click clickbait blog title, right? That's not never gonna sell on a t-shirt, no one's ever gonna buy that. They are gonna probably click and read the article though. But what I thought is that people in the gym who are trying to lose weight, it's you know it's february now so if you're still in the gym with your new year's resolutions someone might find it humorous for a shirt that says you know losing my spare tire with a fat guy on it or maybe someone lifting weights doing cardio something like that so moving back over here if you guys can see merch research we're gonna do a shirt that says losing my spare tire and we're gonna just see what's out there so we'll click search t-shirts let's see here and as you can see, no results, no results at all, right? So what a lot of people do is they're going to see there's no results and immediately think, okay, there's one, there's no competition, that's good, but if no one's interested in buying your shirts in the first place, if there's no customer demand in those niches, you're going to be wasting your time. However, the whole point of this phrase, losing my spare tire, is clearly someone who's interested in the gym, lifting weights, cardio, bodybuilding, fitness is probably the overall arching niche, I would say. So the second thing I did was I ran fitness through Merch Informer. So remember when we came over here to Merch Research, we typed in the phrase that we want to use on the shirt. Two, we realized there are no shirts with this phrase at all on Amazon. And then Three, we looked up the overarching niche to make sure that, hey, does does the main niche get any sales? Are people actually interested in this? Can we make money doing it? So he's typed in fitness, I've already done that. 
these are a bunch of keywords that we can actually use in our listing when we write them and then we can come down here and see that yes fitness shirts do sell funny fitness shirts sell pretty pretty well so on and so forth so there's definitely customer demand here so in order to show off what we've been working on i'm going to head over to the merchant former designer as you can see i was playing around with this now do not make fun of my amazing design skills but i usually outsource all of this stuff but i can just show you how we did this so we'll come over here to text and we will pick let's pick this text losing my and we'll just move it up here make sure it's centered we'll change this to white make it a little bigger and i'm gonna do this quickly so i don't bore you guys to death let's see spare tire and we will make that white now for this little fat man guy here i went to images resources and then typed in this way until it was loading and then i threw in a little little fat guy over there so you can just test out what your shirt looks like on different colors so on and so forth but i like to keep it black pretty easy so let's just realign all this stuff okay so here's my amazing design I made in the last 10 seconds for someone who is interested in going to the gym, losing weight, getting in shape, interested in fitness, right? So we will go ahead and download this amazing design. And then I am going to go over to Merch Locker. If you guys haven't uh, checked out Merch Locker, highly recommend it. This is my test account, so there's only 10 designs uploaded. Um, for anyone who is signed up for Merch Informer or who does sign up for Merch Informer and, you know, today while I'm doing this video, hit up customer support, Merch Informer customer support, and we're going to send you a free month for Merch Locker. But I want to show you what we've been working on. Now, I do need to say it is in, uh, it is in beta mode. We haven't actually released it to people yet, what I'm going to show you. So if there's any bugs, please, uh, please disregard those. So we uh let's see we downloaded this design here now i'm going to open this real quick in another window and i'm going to add this design losing my spare tire and i'm going to drag it in here and upload it hey ryan hey greg how's it going i see people are still joining all right so the design was uploaded I can add some tags to this just so I know what niche it is in the fitness niche. Now, if you have already uploaded this to Amazon, you can just click new item here and add all your information, but we don't have that yet. So what I want to show you is, let's say you're over here inside of Merch by Amazon. You'll see we do have a, a plug in here. I have three open, as you can tell. Now, all you have to do is what go back to merch locker we named it losing my spare tire so if i just go up here and type in losing boom we're going to select a file this is the file that we uploaded all we have to do is click upload we'll go to this one boom here and we'll click upload over here same one for some reason we're going to upload this three times but as you guys can tell this is going to be this is going to be for pop sockets and hoodies and everything else. Let me just refresh my screen here because I can't see what's on the screen. All right, so we'll go back to the first one, as you see, automatically uploaded. So super, super easy. This is going to make when products come down, it's going to make uploading them so much faster. So I'm just going to pick two colors and click next because I want to show you the final thing we are working on here. Can you guys see my screen? It keeps going in and out for me on Facebook here. Hopefully you can. All right, so back uh, in Merch Locker, if you go to the listing writer, let's refresh this real quick. And we type in, you know, let's, let's give this a brand, spare tire tees, uh, funny losing my spare tire fitness t-shirt. This is feature one. This is feature two. Now, for the features, these are going to be your bullet points, right? Um, if I was actually sitting down and writing these so that I was going to upload them and try to make a sale, 
I am not going to try to make a sale on this terrible design because I spent 10 seconds on it. But if I actually put some time and effort into this, what I would do is I would actually come over here to the product search. Remember we searched fitness in the product search. These are the keywords right here that are making these products get in front of the customers that you want to sell to. So what I would do is I would come in here, I type the overarching niche, which is fitness for this design. I look at these keywords in the keyword count here, and I would formulate those into proper sentences in order to put them in the listing. So all you have to do, listing writer right here, just click inject listings. And if you go back to uh, Merch by Amazon here, as you can tell, it automatically uploads your stuff directly to the key features and bullet points and titles and everything. So that's what we've been working on. Quick, quick recap. You know, we went to create, we actually uploaded the products directly from Merch Locker into Amazon. So where that's going to be super helpful is if you have hundreds of designs getting removed per day, once you have a good design catalog, all you have to do to upload them, you know, you hit create and you just select the, you, you type in the name of the t-shirt, you select the file, click upload, and you can just do hundreds of tabs at a time without scrolling through files and folders and trying to figure out what desktop screen you put your folder or file on. So that's going to be extremely, extremely easy. So anyways, that is what we've been working on that plugin. If you guys sign up for Merch Informer today, or if you're already signed up, we haven't released it yet, but I want to make sure you guys actually have access to this. We'll give you a free month, so just hit up Merch Informer support if you are a subscriber, and we will get that over to you. So that is pretty much what I wanted to go over today. I can keep doing some research if you guys want to, but this... This strategy is so, so easy. I mean, all I did was open up Pinterest here, as you can tell, and I just started scrolling through until I found this stupid picture. And as you notice, I didn't put lose your spare tire with just two exercises on a t-shirt because I, you know, took five seconds to think to myself, would anyone buy that shirt? No, they wouldn't because that's a blog post title. So you take that, you know, sometimes you tweak things a little bit, you run them through you run them through merch research over here zero results zero results does not mean that people wouldn't buy it it just means there's no results for that on Amazon you have to think of what niche is above that and what is the overarching niche what is something that whoever's gonna buy this shirt are they interested in that niche and would find this particular saying funny so that's kind of what we're going we're going for here Please save this live. Yes, I am saving it to my computer. It'll be uploaded. Um, it, it uploads to Facebook right afterwards. I'm probably going to upload it to YouTube as well once I can get that going. Need help with advertising merch by Amazon sponsored ads. What do you need help with in regards to AMS? AMS is pretty straightforward. But if you aren't familiar with running ads at all, uh, we did a pretty extensive article on the Merchant Informer blog. So if you just type in, go to Google, type in AMS Merchant Informer, it should be, you know, the first one to three results. All right. I, what's, for the sake of, the sake of research, let's do one more example. Funny shirt. And we will just keep looking here. I'm confused more the chameleon in a bag of Skittles. Skittles might be trademarked, so wouldn't, wouldn't always do that. I like long walks away from everyone. All right, so let's just take that phrase and see what we have here. So I'm sorry about moving this back and forth, but this is an opera screen and behind it is a Chrome screen because I have way too many windows open. So let's go, let's close these out. And the saying we're going to search for is, I like long walks away from everyone. Okay, so this has been, it's been done 13 times. I think I probably wouldn't do this just because every single one of these looks the same. I mean, you don't want to be, even the, so if you put one up, you'd be the 14th person. You don't want to be the 14th person with the same looking designs. So maybe uh, I like long, uh, how about we do runs, long runs, people who like running. 
Okay, so that says eight results, but these are books. So let's go back to much research. Okay, so there, just like that, we took a phrase we found on Pinterest. I like long walks away from everyone. It's funny, but we're gonna we're gonna switch it up. We put I like long runs away from everyone. So there's there's nothing there's nothing on Amazon in the clothing category for I like long runs away from everyone. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to head over to the product search. Now who would like who would like a shirt that says I like long runs away from everyone? Anyone at all? Who would buy that shirt? Anyone at all? Okay, clearly someone who likes running and has a sense of humor. So we're gonna let that pull back and we are going to close that, close that, close that, close that, okay. So while that's going back, we're just going to, so let me show you what I mean here. So we're going to do a shirt that says, I like long, I like long runs away from everyone. The overarching issue is running. And as you can see, there's just tons and tons and tons of results for running. People look at the results too, right? Sloth running team. We'll get there when we get there. We're not using that phrase, but this clearly tells me people that like running or people who are into running are humorous and they buy humorous things. So we go to the product search here. We'll see, you know, that, yeah, this is the best selling running shirt right here. 131 per month estimated, probably a bit more actually, but what you don't want to do is come into Merchant Former and say, hey, this, this shirt right here is selling super well and then just copy it. Because there's already, as you can tell, a ton of these shirts. You're going to be the very last. You're not going to get any search visibility. You're going to come into the Facebook groups and moan about no sales. But what you can easily do is what I just showed you. Come up with a phrase that, you know, running has a lot of results. But all we did was we switched up the phrase to, let me type that in again. I like long runs away from everyone. Okay. There is nothing here. Or how about I love long runs away from everyone. Oh my gosh, look at that. Nothing there either. So then you can come in here to Merchant Former again. Once you look at the overarching niche, Sometimes you just want to come down here and verify that they're selling. You don't even want to look at the design sometimes. But what I like to do is that I know the overarching niche is running. We typed it in here. It brought back the results. And these keywords are exactly how everyone below is getting search visibility. So I know that if I can use these keywords in my own sentences with my own unique phrase here, I love long runs away from everyone, then I stand the chance of getting in front of those customers and making sales. Introvert runners. Thank you, Josh. Someone has responded. <laughs> I'm betting someone's designing one right now. You know what, Ray? Every time I do one of these, which is, hasn't been too often lately, I always see a few pop up afterwards. Sometimes I do go back and check. But it's not, it's not this specific phrase that everyone should go be creating. It's just how easy it is to look at Pinterest Okay, you can look at Amazon, you can do that all day, see what's selling on Amazon, change phrases there. I just find it a lot easier to look at Pinterest and because Pinterest is full of advertisements to people, not t-shirts all the time per se. Take those advertisements and spin them into phrases that you can use on Amazon and then use Merchant Former to actually look at the overarching niche so that you can take the keywords and put them into your listings. It's good, Jacob. Hey, Lori. So here, I'll just, how about another example? Let's go back to Pinterest here in, uh, in another window. And I mean, all I do is type in funny shirts so I can see shirts, but if you just go to the home page here, you know, there's gonna be, let's see, 15 fascinating things you've probably never asked your long-term partner. That's not sure if I can spin that into a phrase. Actually, let's go back just to funny, funny shirt. A little bit easier. 
I sold a little over a couple dozen of one design that you found while doing research a few months back. <laughs> nice job, Jack. That's awesome. Let's see. Hold on. Let me overthink this. Remember when I asked for your opinion? Yeah, me either. Let's see. I do not have enough coffee or middle fingers for today. See, stuff like this, I don't know. Let's actually check this. So we'll open this up. Coffee is a huge niche that I don't exactly recommend running running into a lot of people there. But if you can come up with your own unique phrases, uh, it shouldn't be that hard, to be honest. So let's actually just look. I do not have enough coffee or middle fingers for today. Okay, 15 results. So I do not have enough. What's another word for coffee that might not be overused? Um, I do not have enough of espresso. Let's copy that, put it back in here. Hopefully I spelled that right. Okay, so that narrows it down, but as you can tell, the design itself doesn't have espresso in it. I do not have enough espresso or middle fingers. I mean, you, you, could, you could change this out for any amount of swear words you want. That would probably work as well. I just need coffee just to make coffee. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna look that up. Hopefully that's not your niche. Let's see, I need coffee uh, just to make coffee. All right. 29 results, do any of these actually say that? Uh, nope, nope, nope. Sometimes you actually have to look through this stuff because it's not always gonna be I just want to drink coffee, crochet, and take naps. It's a very unique, uh, unique niche right there. Just want to pet dogs, drink coffee, yada yada yada. I'm not drink drinking coffee. Okay. Coffee and eyeliner, coffee and mascara. I care after coffee. So some of these don't even need to be difficult. I mean, for people who, I, I doubt this is sold, but let's take a look. No, it has. It ha I mean, it hasn't sold well, but it has. So, I mean, something like this, if you could come in, don't copy their shirt, but come on, this person put maybe five seconds. Five, this kind of effort is, is this kind of effort that I showed you guys earlier. You can do better than that. So let's actually go back to this. So, yeah, um, I need coffee just to make coffee doesn't seem to be in the results. So another thing you guys can do is, like I was explaining for the unique phrases, you know, you find it on Pinterest, you twist it around a little bit, you make sure that, you know, yes, there is, there is customer demand. And then once you know that there's customer demand, what do you do? You put up a shirt, and then you can run AMS listings to it. So really not that hard. I just want to drink coffee, take naps, and sell paparazzi. I don't know. Is paparazzi trademarked? I probably wouldn't do that. Yeah. So, so if you guys just hold on. So sorry for not explaining. So I'm just looking at this shirt. Uh, Merchant former trademark check right here is a plugin. So if you go to the Chrome store and just type in Merchant former, install the plugin. You can run this on any shirt you want, but it's what it's going to do is it's going to highlight trademark phrases. So if you click them, it'll show you. You know what type of trade here's the name of the trademark the serial number registration number type and then status so all these are live this is a text trademark then you can just click the serial number which will actually open it up on the USPTO website which is very 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 easy to make sure that you don't screw up and get your account banned for infringing on something maybe you don't understand so PSA if you don't understand something on merch by Amazon just don't do it just don't do it that way you don't have to come to the groups and complain that you got banned you looked ahead of time realized hey i don't understand this or there's a trademark here and then just move on so easy enough anyways registration canceled because the registrant did not file an acceptable declaration under section 8. okay i still wouldn't do this paparazzi they have more money than any of us watching this and me so I don't want to. I don't want to tick off the paparazzi. But, anyways, something to think about. So let's go back to Pinterest. 
I don't really like the coffee niche, man. It's it's hard. That extension is great. Yeah, more people should use that extension, honestly. I spent a lot of time on that. But it has saved me countless... Because uh, I'm pretty lazy. So if, I, if, I'm, if I'm uploading something, um, I would just click that button. Because before, you know, you'd have to go to USPTO and search every single type of uh, sentence and phrase and different phrase structures and make sure you don't screw up and sometimes I forget things or miss things. I made it a lot easier for someone who doesn't actually want to spend all that time. Alright, we're looking for something we can spin off here. Uh, spin off a phrase. If you guys see something, just drop in the comments so stop on it. Good moms say bad words. Eh. Just tell me when and where I'll be there 20 minutes late. People keep mistaking my wow for compliments. Eh, I may not be right, but I'm never wrong. Eh. You know what's crazy is all of these different text-based shirts, like when merch first started, you could throw up something like this and you'd immediately start selling. Nowadays, you actually have to do a little bit of research and it'll put forth some effort, which a lot of people don't do. But if you're willing to actually put forth the effort to make something that looks better, make something that's unique, and do the research to make sure you actually put in the right keywords, you can still easily sell, even though there is more competition. Let's see. Well, do you do that didn't go as planned. All right. Introverts unite. We're here. What's this say? Oh, <laughs> this goes to an Etsy store. So hopefully, uh, whoa, this is going to an Etsy store that's killing it. On Etsy since 2017 with 46,000 sales. So guys, while you're doing your research from Rich by Amazon, a lot of the time you will come up with stuff like this, and Etsy is pretty easy to do if you're willing to go through the absolute headache of dealing with customers, which for 46,000 sales, I'm assuming most people are. But again, we're not here to copy people, we're just here to look at what's going on. But anyways, for Etsy, if you actually scroll down, don't just look at this stuff, but if you scroll down to the bottom, you actually see the reviews of what people bought. So this person bought your text here. Can't really do that on Amazon. Kind of classy, kind of hood. Okay, here, let's, let's try this. So kind of classy, kind of hood. We are going to make sure everyone can see this. Can everyone see this uh, right here? Let's see. Okay, so kind of classy, kind of hood. What we're going to do is we're going to move this out of the way again. going to close out all this other stuff I was looking at. So... First, we're just going to type in the main phrase, kind of classy, kind of hood. I'm assuming there's probably going to be some merch stuff up here. Yeah, 140 results. So what if we typed in kind of classy, kind of bad? Kind of bad. All of a sudden, it drops to uh, four results, but these shirts don't say kind of classy. They say kind of bad, kind of... can't even read that. Bougie, but boo I don't even know how to say that. Someone's probably gonna make uh, make fun of me here. Classy lawsuit. Yeah. Yeah, kind of classy. Yeah, okay. I didn't. I didn't even think of that. Good. That's a good point. Um. Classy man. That was uh Did that get canceled? What was the outcome of that? Do you know? Let's see here. Create your own life. All right. All right, Janet, let's look that up. Create your own life. 105 results, but do any of those actually say create your own life? Now, create your own life, I don't know. Maybe that's an entrepreneur t-shirt. I'm not exactly sure what that would be for the overarching niche. Um, but I like it. If you could, if you could figure out where to promote that, or 
I mean, I, I have to think about that for a bit. What you want to figure out the overarching niche so that you can figure out what keywords to use in your descriptions and bullet points to make sure you make sales. I mean, you can create the, the best, the best design out there, but if you don't use the right keywords or you don't understand the tar who, who you're targeting as an audience, it's just going to sit on, sit on Amazon with no sales. Let's see here. So create your own life. I, li I like that. I like that. I just, I'm just not sure what the niche is that I'd search for to make sure that I can pull up these keywords in order to actually build the listing that once it's up, you want to use these keywords in your listing. Because what a lot of people do, I would say what most people do is they, they'll, they'll come up with the phrase, so create your own life, I think is what we just came up with, right? Yes, create your own life. So they'll, they'll create the shirt. It'll be a great looking shirt. They'll put it on Merch by Amazon. They'll, they'll give it a brand name. They'll go to the first bullet point and they'll say, you know, create your own life today. Buy this great t-shirt. Okay, that's great, but that's not targeting a target audience. That's just throwing out a t-shirt and, and hoping it sells. But the way you sell is that you, you, know, you market it. One of the ways you market it is with keywords. So you have to figure out what keywords to put inside your listing. And the way that we do that, or the way that I do that rather, I go to Merch Informer, I type it in in the product search here, I scroll down, I make sure the niche has, has sales here, so this niche clearly does. And then I use the keywords inside of my listings. I don't copy the shirt, I don't come in here and say I'm gonna make the 400th Sloth Running Team shirt. I just use the keywords that they use to get in front of the overarching niche, which was fitness or running. So that's, it's really easy once you understand that if you come to the table with unique things and then you use keywords that people are already successfully using, you don't need to reinvent the wheel here. You just need to get in front of the same audience. Maybe under the life coach, life coach. Okay. All right. Let's look at that. Is there a life? I don't know many life coaches. So, uh, let's see, keep calm and hire a life coach. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I mean, I could I could see this being a niche. I never really even thought about it. Do 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 do. Life coach. We're gonna let that search. I come over here and keep looking at these. What is a labor coach? Someone who coaches someone through having a kid, it looks like. See, just, see I, I just do these on the fly. I don't prepare these videos or anything. I just come up with or land on the weirdest things. A labor coach. I am a... Huh. Bradley Method. Let's see. Is allegedly ostrich safe? It's selling like butter. I'm going to be honest. I don't even know what that is. Um... If I don't know what something is, I automatically just skip it. But is that a is that in the news? Is what is that? Allegedly, yes. let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, now I know what you're talking about. I have no idea why this is selling. Let's see. If you don't know why something is selling, that's that's another uh, big red flag of you probably shouldn't do it. Because if something just explodes overnight, it's probably based on something you're unaware of. A uh, good example of that is that daddy shark. Okay, I had absolutely no idea what that was from. I don't have kids. It just blew up overnight, but I knew that I wasn't going to do it because I didn't understand it. Anyways, let's go back here. Let's see. Life coach. We'll come down here. Swim team. Okay, a lot of coach. So it, from this, it looks like a lot of the coaching keywords that are selling better are actually for teams, not life coaching. So what that tells you is that while well, life coach might be a niche, it's not the best selling niche in the world. Basketball is my valentine. that even say something so <laughs> something like this guys is something you probably shouldn't be doing not that i can't it's build season but it's it's not readable 
So if I can't read it just simply by scrolling through the results, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scroll right past it. So if you change this up to maybe some white text or, you know, fade out the background a little bit so you could actually read what it says, you'd probably stand a better chance at selling. It has sold, so I can't hate on it too much, but this is, in my humble opinion, not a very good design. It could be improved by whoever put it up. I hear that song every day at home. I heard that song one time, and that was the last time I heard it. Okay, so a labor coach, okay? You guys want a, a hot niche here? Labor coach. Didn't even know that was a thing. So, now I'm curious, labor. We're not going to type in labor coach. I just want to see what comes up for uh, the actual keyword labor. See if it's actually, you know, people who are laboring or people who are in labor. We'll see what pops up there. But it's just not readable. It's also SpongeBob font. Is it? I... I haven't seen SpongeBob in a very long time. Yes, actually, yes, it is. Now that you point that out, that's a good eye. Wouldn't do that either. So, okay. Ah, I don't know why that just popped up. Sorry. Um, Slack group. Here's a good example. So here is the shirt I landed on. I can't. It's build season. Unreadable. Uh, SpongeBob font is uh, someone pointed out here scroll down here customers who viewed this item also viewed this item which even though that's also not the best design I can actually read it and it's not in SpongeBob font and you come down here it's not selling nearly as well but that might mean that the other one just recently sold as well so that's not always something you have to go on but this is a better design okay um, take this design right here and compare it to I don't know this one looks pretty decent I would say that is better it's not the best it could definitely be whoever put this up could could do some stuff to it maybe make the text a little grungy but you know there's a there's a lot that you can do speaking of grunge text something like this I would say that's a bit better it's a husband partner coaching the woman during delivery. Yes, I did. I did pick that up, but I was not aware that that was a, a thing people bought on T-shirts. I'm always surprised at what people buy. So let's see here. So here's a mechanic one. Remember, we just searched for labor. All right. So yeah, a lot of the. A lot of the labor looks like actual laboring rather than in labor. But a lot of these shirts, if you can get these, again, if you're going to make the hourly raid shirts, which there's a ton of, one, come up with niches that everyone hasn't overdone to death. So, I mean, most people are familiar with what a carpenter is. So there's tens of thousands of different niches or uh careers out there pick pick the underserved ones and make sure you come up with some unique stuff here don't just copy this she eats for two i drink for three <laughs> is that uh i like that let's see she eats for two i drink for three all right so if you see this is a good example you can sometimes you can use the same phrase if this isn't trademarked I haven't done any trademark checks but all of these you know this one is the same as this one these are basically copying each other uh, this one a little different but these are all mostly the same if you were to hire an illustrator or get something unique on the table here you could you could blow these guys out of the water I I like the saying that's uh it's pretty funny it does have a review so we know it has sold now, it's not the best selling, but what you can do, hire an illustrator, get something unique up, make sure you optimize your bullet points here, and then run AMS ads towards pregnancy, towards the pregnancy uh, niche. So if, if a husband is, is on the computer trying to find a funny shirt for his wife who's pregnant, and he comes across a shirt that looks like this, or a shirt that you put up with an illustrator and he finds it funny, he's probably just going to impulse buy it himself. 
this stuff is fairly easy. Farsane, Farsane, is that how you say your name, hopefully? You seem to be better at this than I am. Taking me a while with the kind of classy kind of hood. Kind of classy, kind of bad. Kind of classy, don't do classy lawsuit, I don't know. Oh no, let's see. Let's trademark check this. And say no more. No more. Let's see. So, see, these trademarks, you usually don't have to worry about them, but I always find it interesting just to, like, look at them. Someone trademarked no more on the principal register. Jackets, pants, shirts, and shoes, 025. So, what the what this trademark plugin does, the Merchant Former Trademark Check plugin, what it's going to do is it's actually going to search for trademarks in clothing, or if you click this one, in pop sockets. So, where was what I just opened? Not that. Not that. This one. Current owner. Tony Eckwood. Now, I'm going to look at the document. So, just so you guys know, once you're on the USPTO website, if you go to test and you're searching, if you click the TSDR button, it's going to bring up this page that I'm on right now. If you want to do it all manually, you can come down here, as you see, I'm just looking goods and services, who on earth owns no more. Um, and then if you go to documents, this tab right here, you can actually scroll down, look at all the correspondence with the court. I like to look at the drawings. Sometimes you're going to see Photoshop drawings in here that are just absolute madness that the USPTO accepted. But in this case, I don't, I don't have any idea how this person is using this. Doesn't look like he's been to court. So you really, you really don't need to worry about stuff like this. I mean, not legal advice, of course, but some people are just crazy. So a lot of the one word trademarks, if you see that, you know, hey, sense is trademarked here. Yeah, it's a live trademark, but you know, you're, this one registration canceled because they didn't file an acceptable declaration. So, I mean, stuff like that, you really you don't have to worry about. It's when I click this button here, what I'm looking for is you know two, three, four word phrases that are trademarked that maybe I didn't even think of of looking them up. I used to smoke weed. I still do, but I used to too. Not a bad, not a bad phrase. I'm not gonna search for that one because I probably get some. Uh, Get some con every time I do a video where I include drug references, some people get very mad and send me nasty emails. So we will uh, we will not do we will not do that on today's live. So let's go back to Pinterest. We'll do one more and then I do have to run. So let's see. Oh yeah, we were on this Etsy shop. Evertree clothing, killing it. That is a note for Etsy for anyone uh, watching is that on Etsy, it's not always merch by Amazon. So designs that sell really well on merch by Amazon won't necessarily sell really well on Etsy. It's mostly women buyers here. They like cute stuff, cute mock-ups, a lot of just tech stuff, as you can tell from the store that's just crushing it. So keep that in mind if you're doing Etsy. <laughs> Let's see. Wouldn't do this. Wouldn't do this. So, it, you know, if, if you're not a native English speaker, you might not understand why I say don't do this. It's from a book, not the one crab, two crab, but the fish. So don't do that at all. You will get your account banned. But again, if you don't understand something, move on. Don't do it. Hey, Steve, how's it going? Hello, kitty. Hello, hello, hello. I call, let's see. Don't do Dr. Pepper. So a lot of times when you're doing research, you're going to, or on Etsy or even on Amazon, even on Amazon, there are going to be so many different infringements that will get you in trouble that are currently live. So even if you see stuff on Amazon it does not mean that you can do it. So that is, I mean, I don't know how many times I can say that you this this pops up in the group all the time. Oh, but I saw 400 other um do do shark designs up why can't i do that well you can't do that because they haven't been caught yet they might lose their account tomorrow 
there's no need to play in the gray area when you can just do exactly what I'm showing you and make just as much, if not more money. So, I'm no cactus expert, but I know a prick when I see one. T-Rex, let's see. I'm gonna find one more, we're looking for one more. Free gas, see low. <laughs> Dude, where are you getting these? Where are you getting these? These are actually pretty funny, the comments. Don't follow my footsteps, I run into walls. Do, do let's see you know what let's just let's see if any more for funny shirt we'll just hit search again there funny shirt all right it takes two to make a day go right not bad wine is a huge niche hard to get into though and don't select youth I think the very first thing when the youth policy came out is I put up put up some wine shirts, put up some other kind of shirts, and me being in the in the just just used to clicking all the buttons, clicked them all anyways, even though I had ten seconds previous read that I can't select youth. Did it anyways, got some rejections. Let's see. The shade of black I'm wearing really brings out the color of my soul. Not bad. You know what, let's let's go back, okay. We're gonna go to over here, shade of black. We're just gonna see what, what shows up. Let's see here. I mean, here here's basically the design we just found over there. Not selling very well, is anything trademarked? New. Let's go back here. This is kind of like a metal, metal looking text. But again, I mean, you look, 355 results. I, when I'm looking into a specific phrase, I mean, this isn't a full phrase, but I like to see under 100 results. And then I also like to be able to actually tweak the phrase itself so it's unique. I'm not just putting up the 400th, this shade of black really brings out the color of my soul. So. Make sure that when you're doing this, you can actually tweak the phrase and make sure that the phrase that you actually search is under, I'd say I do 100 results. And then finally, you have to make sure that the overarching niche has customers. I can't stress that enough. If you, if you make sure this is under 100 results and you tweak the phrase, but you're going for a niche that, you know, there's three people in the world who are interested in it, you're never going to make that sale. So that is the most important part. So then once you've actually determined what you're doing, run it through the product search and merchant former and then use these keywords here. Once it comes back with the results, use the keywords in your own sentences because this is how people are making money. They're not going in here and typing in who knows what. They're actually typing these keywords in here and these are what's getting the product in front of the customer. So I know I've said that probably like 25 times in the last 30 minutes, but that's the most important part. Even, even terrible designs will sell if you can get them in front of enough customers. Now, I know the point of merch is to put a good product, but that's just the truth. Terrible stuff sells well if enough people see it, period. You know, it's just, it's just numbers, it's data. I might look tough, but I'm actually tougher. It's a good one. It's, I'm gonna search that too. I hope I'm not like stealing all your niches. You just keep throwing them in here. I might look tough, but I'm if I can spell actually tougher. No results. Look at that. Or saying you should do some of these videos with me. Easy. I mean. Th this niche, the overarching niche here could be so many different things. It could be, you know, Someone who's interested in mixed martial arts, people who are into running marathons, okay? I'm not tough enough to run 26 miles without dying. Most people here aren't, but I'm sure they would get a kick out of this if you styled the text right, if you had an illustrator put the right things on there. So you have to look at not what the phrase itself is, but is the phrase interesting to the overarching niche? What kind of software are you making for KDP? 
you will see you need to go to uh make sure you sign up for the email list it's in i post it in like all the groups but as soon as we launch i will i will shoot that out to everyone you guys can check it out i have more ideas than time to put them up <laughs> isn't that the truth if i find a phrase with no results on amazon how do i find keywords for it to use in my listings so this, this is what I'm talking about. So if, if you find a phrase with no results on Amazon, which we've been doing, I don't know, last 30 minutes or so, you need to figure out what the overarching phrase is. So for this one, I might look tough, but I'm actually tougher. If you are going to do that shirt and target, you need to figure out who you're targeting it towards. So if you're targeting this towards runners, go into Merchant Former, type in, go to the product search, type in running, because running would be the overarching niche that you want to sell. Where did it go? That you want to sell this phrase to. I might look tough, but I'm actually tougher. So first you figure out who do you want to sell it to. Then you, then you, what I do, I go into Merch Informer, type it into the product search. And then I'm going right here, this keyword count. So if you scroll down just a little bit underneath the data, the keyword count is going to show, down here it's going to show all the running shirts that are selling. And then these keywords right here are going to be the keywords that all of the selling shirts use to get in front of the customers who are interested in running shirts. So you'd be coming to the table with a unique phrase, okay? You'd be using the keywords from, from the selling shirts here. You're not gonna go down here, you're not gonna copy their features. What you're gonna do is you're gonna say, okay, what keywords in this list make sense for a runner that would be interested in a funny shirt that says, I might look tough, but I'm actually tougher. You work them into your own sentences, okay? But that's who you're targeting. You have to figure out who you're targeting first. And then those are the keywords that you want to use. So again, what I see so many people doing is they'll, they'll find a phrase, they will make up their own phrase. Maybe it's funny, maybe it's not, I don't know. They'll put it up, but when, they, when it gets their bullet points, they'll just say whatever's on the shirt. Now, I might look tough, but I'm actually tougher. Okay, that is a phrase, but that does that phrase itself doesn't target any specific group of people. You're not trying to sell that shirt to a specific group of people. You have to figure out who you're actually selling to, which so many people are not doing. They just throw stuff up and and wonder why it doesn't sell when they, when their bullet points are three words long. Target that to bros in the oil field. You might start a <laughs> the uh, the affliction shirts. Yes. Maybe, maybe you should tell Ken. I don't know if Ken is around. You should, you should, you should make this shirt and uh, send it to him. He used to work in the oil field. See if it takes off. But yeah, does anyone else have any other questions on what I've been babbling about for the past forty minutes? Just drop them in the comments. I'd be happy to attempt to answer them. But uh, just to wrap it up here, if you guys didn't catch the beginning, highly suggest you go back and look at it. I uh, went over the, the Merch Locker stuff, which should be coming out fairly soon. And if you actually want access to that, if you're signed up to Merch Informer, or if you sign up today or maybe the next two or three days, uh, send the Merch Informer uh, customer support. It's just on the homepage. Send them, send them a message and we will get a free month of Merch Locker over to you guys. So that when we do release it, hopefully bug free, everyone here can uh, try it out. It can work for the feminist group too, Rosie the Riveter. Yes, it could. I don't know if I would use Rosie the Riveter. I mean, that used to be, I know some people who used that type of style and, and her on shirts in the very beginning. I don't know if I'd do it now, but you know, as with everything, you have to, have to, look, have to look at it. How do you advertise and bring in sales? Uh, well, the, f the first thing you need to do is make sure you get your keywords right, which I just was just talking about because, you know, your on-page optimization, you might hear some people call it on-page SEO. SEO just stands for search engine optimization. That is a, is a type of advertising, okay? Not only are, are these bullet points down here advertising to the customer who's going to read them, but you're also advertising to the Amazon search engine, which is going to, their bots are gonna look at this and then rank your shirt based upon them. So the very first thing you wanna do is get your keywords right. Uh, the second thing, look into AMS. Sometimes AMS isn't worth it for a niche. Sometimes it's way too expensive. 
AMS does take some getting used to. It does take some testing. So if you want to start with AMS, uh, read the article on the Merchant Former blog. But you have to be okay with losing some money while you learn what you're doing. You have to be okay with losing money before you actually figure out your campaigns because you have to test them. It's not something you just click a button and you start making $1,000 a month. It's you click a button, you know, the ads run for a few days, you stop the ads, you look at what, what keywords ran for that ad, which keywords in that ad set actually produce sales, which keywords are people clicking but not buying, then you want to take those keywords and remove them. You have to constantly be testing what you're doing. So the people who are setting up 10,000 campaigns, auto campaigns, and then running them for five months, they're just going to lose money. I mean, sure, it might work. It might work overall because you have so many campaigns going. But when it comes to running ads, which I have run a lot of ads over the past, you know, I don't know how long I've been doing internet stuff, seven years, 10 years, you have to constantly be monitoring them, testing them, so you can rotate out the keywords that work and remove the ones that don't. Because let's just say you're you're doing you're doing this shit right here, okay? I let's see, just don't ask. I can't. It's building season. It's build season. So if I were to run this in an auto campaign, and three days go by, and I start looking at the keywords that have been running for this, and maybe uh, maybe the keyword car builder shirt is in there. It's been clicked 250 times. Let's just say for example purposes, car builder shirt that keyword. My ad was running for that. It's been clicked 250 times. I spent $100 and I didn't make a single sale. Or maybe I only made one sale. What do you think I'm going to do? I spent 200 and, or 200 bucks. Let's say I'm paying a dollar to click. I spent 200 bucks. I made one sale. So I made what? You know, a few dollar royalty. I'm going to kill that keyword. I'm going to remove it so that when I run in a manual campaign, I'm only running the keywords that are performing. So it's all about testing and monitoring what you're doing. But uh, I would stick with AMS, just, just to finish up my little rant here. I would stick with AMS. Facebook ads is going to be extremely difficult if you can't figure out AMS, so I'd start there. Um, there's definitely a bigger audience with Facebook ads, but you're going to end up just spending a ton of money without anything to show for it if you've never done it before. So stick with AMS. Um, outside of AMS and making sure your keywords are right, definitely look into social traffic. I like Pinterest. Um, Facebook groups, stuff like that. AMS uh, wasn't really made for $3 profit items. That is so true. AMS works a lot, lot, lot better if you're selling your own, selling your own like digital items. So, you know, selling your own books, selling your own clothing, stuff like that. Let's see, tweak it carefully, work for it. Yeah, I mean, you, you can, tw you you have to be able to tweak it. It's not a set up and forget. I see so many people asking in the groups or, you know, pending pending posts that are saying, you know, help me with AMS. And I just want to like shake those people. Have you have you helped yourself? I mean, go in and try things out, test things out, rotate things out, just try. And then once you've tried and you understand where you're going wrong and you still don't know how to fix it, then come ask the group. Then people actually have something to, you know, work off of to help you out. Alrighty. So I think I'm going to wrap that up. I need to get going. But if you guys have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments since this goes on Facebook and I will get back to you. I am going to throw this up on YouTube later as well. So if you hate Facebook, you can watch it there. All right, guys. I appreciate it. You guys have a good one. Bye.